Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you why it's not a good idea to shoot in JPEG instead of RAW. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, so this is my no video number 4 of my 30 day challenge, one video per day. My name is Serge Ramali, I am a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris. I'm still in San Francisco on my way back to Los Angeles, I'm going to go through uh, Carmel to do some photos there and see a friend and I want to talk to you about a little walk that I had with some friends yesterday at Baker Beach in San Francisco and I tried to get some good shots, we had a great sunset uh, but the sunset was the other way. Anyways, let me show you the photos that I got and I made a big mistake because I shot JPEG instead of RAW. Here is the whole story. You know, we, I did a little meetup and uh, we were by the Golden Gate Bridge. I, I, I picked the Golden Gate Bridge and the Baker Beach because that's the only spot I knew to put on Instagram for friends to come along. And um, it's probably, there's probably better locations to shoot the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. But we had an okay and decent sunset. But I make a big mistake is that my camera went wrong, my Sony scenario went wrong and I, I reset it. And by resetting it, uh, it took the RAW file out, meaning I was shooting only JPEG. So for the whole evening, I was only shooting JPEG, which is something I really don't like because you lose so much information, as you will see. So let me show you some of the photos that I got. Uh, honestly, they were not amazing. The problem, you know, and that I have that often on landscape is that the sunset was really nice, but it was on the left of the bridge. It was opposite to the bridge. So I was trying to do, I said, oh, maybe I can do like a panel where on my left, I've got the sunset and then I'm going to move toward the bridge. But it was so far away, uh, you know, plus I also, uh, another thing that I had is that all my, sh all my photos were very uh, blurry. You know, they were blurry and I couldn't understand why they were so blurry. And then I realized that my stabilization was on. Now, if you've got a Sony A7R and you got your stabilization on and you're on a tripod, it's actually going to make a blurry shot. If, when you're on a tripod, you need to make, you, you know, have your stabilization off. So what I do now is in the little function menu, I add it there so I can turn it off and on fast. But you have to think about it. Tripod, no stabilization. So anyway, I was even overexposed on some of the photos. Uh, it started pretty bad, you know, but I was talking to a lot of people and I was tr always trying to do this sort of pano, you know, where, uh, you know, I'm trying to catch the sun here, you know, and then go back toward the bridge. But it was so far away that it sort of didn't work. Uh, let me see what other shots we have. Same idea, always trying to do the same things. Uh, you know, I tried playing around with this wood thing, you know, have this, this wood thing as a foreground element and that didn't go really well. I, don't, I didn't like it. And... Um, but then one of my friends started taking photos going to the water. And then I thought, oh, maybe I can do a panel with him. Maybe I can do one, you know, uh, two and three. So I, I did that. I took the, the shot. And uh, let me show you uh, what I did to make a panel. Well, first I made a panel out of it, which is here. And I retouched it with some basic settings, you know, just blacks, white. Actually, let me, let me do it from the start really quick. So you see, I'm going to give you the file so you can play around with it. So I took this photo, then I selected this photo. So this is JPEG, it, it, it's, you know, and that's totally my mistake. This is JPEG and this photo. And I pressed, I went right click, photo merge, panorama. And um, I usually always do my panorama first and then do my retouching afterwards. So that was kind of cool. Uh, I, you know, you can always try the different perspective. No perspective is, is, is not good look how it makes the bridge really stretchy. Uh, what I was looking for, I was looking for something that, uh, where I could have uh, you know, the, a lot of sky. So cylindrical seems to be the best. Uh, let me see, perspective, perspective. No, it's really too, the, the, the bridge is too, too much uh, transformed. The problem is that he's so far away. So I'm thinking maybe in Photoshop I can move him here and then crop the photo and have something that's kind of better. So that's what I'm going to go for. I'm not going to auto crop because I might get in Photoshop some of that sky. I'm not going to do boundary wrap because it makes him really stretchy. So I'm just going to click uh, merge, but I've done that already. And here is the result. Let me reset this one. So what I did is, and you know, because it's, it's a JPEG, I don't have the option on Rolf on, you know, on the, the white balance. So what I did is I opened up the shadows. I brought down the heights, but check this out. JPEG, you bring down the highlights, you lose everything. With the RAW file, I would have gotten all the details there. And now I don't have that, you know, what a mistake, what a rookie mistake. I used to do that mistake all the time when I started photographing, you know, forget to put your camera in RAW. 
But anyways, let's see if we can still do something. I'm going to do my blacks. I'm going to do my whites. I'm just going to add a bit of magenta and a little bit of yellow. But the, the hardest work is going to be moving him towards there. Uh, that's going to be kind of tricky. So let's see. Um, edit Photoshop 2015. And, you know, uh, Adobe created a tool to do that, to move somebody like this, but it doesn't work really well. I'll show you why. The tool is here. It's called a content aware move tool. The idea is you make a selection of you know what you want to move and you just move it. Uh, but and you press enter. But you will see uh, the result is very, very uh, uh, I mean every time you do it it's gonna be different. Uh, but the first time I tried it it was so awful that I I I'll show you another technique that's takes more time. Ah, oh, it's actually did an okay job. I mean, a better job this time. Uh, it did actually a better job this time. But let me show you a way that I think is better. So what I do is I command D to undo. I'm going to do a selection of him. And uh, and then I, you see here, I'm going to make sure my, uh, my selection is feathered 30%. So it's a very smooth selection. Then I'm going to press Command J on my keyboard. By pressing Command J on the keyboard, I put him on his own layer. And then I'm going to use the Move tool to move him. But And uh, I'm going to try to align it with the water in the sky the best that I can. Press Enter. No, I don't, you don't even need to press Enter. Just use the Move tool. And now I'm going to create a mask. And take a brush. Take a little brush. Make sure the brush is black. So this is a white mask. Make sure the, the brush is black. And I'm just going to... Oh, brush. Make sure the brush is very feathered, harness zero. And I'm just going to brush here. Try to blend this sort of two exposure here. And it's okay if I make his backpack a bit invisible for now. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm just going to do something like this. All right, the issue is going to be the mountains. Uh, this is kind of cool. I, this was actually, anyway, over too bright. And... Uh, yeah, that, you know, that doesn't really matter because it could be, it's so random, the water, it could be like this. I want to keep his shadows, keep everything else, and uh, voila. So for the backpack, I just press X uh, to go to black. I'm going to put my harness like 89, make my brush much smaller. I'm just going to bring back the backpack. Oh, make sure I'm at, a, I'm at 100, actually, of opacity. I'm just going to bring back his backpack. And voila, it's a very fast way to move somebody. Then you zoom out, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press C for crop. I'm going to crop him out the first time, because I'm trying to get him closer to, uh, you know, closer to the, the water. And uh, I, you can actually, maybe I can even move him a little bit further, uh, make, make him a little closer. Um, yeah, why not? You know, because I, I, I'm trying to get out of the pano. Let's see here. So if I go back on the mask, and I did that really quick, you know, I could spend more time. I didn't want to bore you with uh, half an hour of selecting, but, you know, the, the, the key thing is with a mask and a very, you know, very, uh, how do you say, feather brush, you can get a, away with a lot of things. I'm sure people who doesn't see this tutorial will not guess that the sun was already here. So I'm going to just do this, and the first time I did it, I think I did it better. I'm going to crop the sky here a little bit. I'm just trying to get him closer to the uh, to the to the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay, yeah, it does look weird here a little bit. So I'm going to keep doing. I'm going to go. It's kind of nice sometimes to go, you know, um, out really uh, far so you can see better. Like I'm just going to um, command Z to undo. You want to have a very light brush to to mix different exposure. So uh, command Alt Z to undo. Let me lower this because I think, yeah, I think that sunset is a little strong. So by being at twenty percent with some black, I'm just making it go down. I'm trying to get the colors to match a bit more. You know, it looks like there's a halo around his face. I'll show you the first time I tried it. It really was better. So uh, I'm actually gonna put the harness at fifty. So it's really a trial and error process, and it takes some time to just trying to get that hello hello you know a little less here but i was trying to get him into the sun that was the whole idea the whole idea was to get him, you know was to get him into the sun and so um yeah you know people can think he was free i mean he was really truly there under the sun because i i, I moved everything so uh, i think that's gonna work 
and I'm gonna save this, go back into Lightroom. I'll show you the first time I did it. This is the first time with the same technique. Let's see if I did a better job. Uh, yeah, kind of similar. Okay, so this is the file uh, from Photoshop. Now I'm gonna do a little double development first. I'm gonna take the, you know, the crop tool. I, I wanna make my horizon a bit more straight. Uh, yes, and but I wanna get back some of the, I don't wanna cut the Golden Gate Bridge. I wanna have it in full, something like this. And then I'm gonna make a gradient here. Um, maybe adding, so I'm gonna to go to exposure minus the exposure, maybe add a little bit of magenta. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here because there's a lot of high frequency texture there. I don't like this, I wanna make this darker. I don't want the attention to be here. And voila, uh, so that's what the, one, of, one, of, one of the first shots that I got, I kind of like. Uh, but again, you know, what a mistake to, uh, to not have shot this uh, on raw files. Um, let me show you what kind of other photos I got. Then I got really close to the bridge. And this is another one that I did that I, that I retouched, you know, just basic contrast and retouching. That was kind of cool. Uh, one trick, when you want to do long exposure and you got a lot of wave, try to go, uh, how much was I? One second. One second is good. If you go like 10 seconds, the water is really flat. And with one second, you know, I got like this sort of like, you know, water flowing there. And so the, I kind of like this one, but again, not a raw file. So there's not much I can do, you know, uh, let me show you the before. That's the before, that's the after. I just did a little bit of contrast, my usual workflow. Uh, so I, I took a whole bunch of photos. And then, you know, it was getting really dark. And this one I haven't retouched. Is it sharp? Yeah, it is sharp. Uh, but, you know, that type of photo I've done many times. So I can open up the shadows, make it brighter, you know, blacks. I mean, you still get away a lot. The, 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 the biggest problem, you know, with, with uh, JPEG is, is the white balance. You know, so if I want to do the white balance, it's so strong, you know. You barely touch the white balance settings and it just, you know, it just changes so much. Uh, but that's kind of cool. I mean, it's a decent photo. I, I like the little reflection here in the water and maybe we can do some, um, on this one, you know, I can do a little bit of gradient here. Uh, I'm gonna go to exposure. Remember when you go to exposure, it makes everything down, comes down to zero except this. Maybe you make this even darker. And usually what I do is I take a little brush, you know, I take a little brush and, um, you know, you've seen me do this over if you follow my channel. So if not, please watch my channel and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm going to make the water a much more, you know, put more attention on the foam that's there. So it stands out, maybe not that much, create a new brush. And uh, I want to put, make this a little more brighter and add a bit of magenta uh, here in, uh, and maybe a bit of, you know, just to have a different thing. I mean, not a bad photo, not a bad photo. Uh, probably will do well on social media, okay? Yeah, not, not so bad, not so bad. And one last thing that we did is we played around with um, a thing you call that steel wood. Uh, we played around with steel wood. I was trying to get, you know, somebody doing steel wood and having the, the, the bridge behind, but you know, not, uh, not that well, but still, I, I, you know, I still will get that photo. So at the end of the day, what I, I was happy with basically this, uh, just, let me see, let me show you which one I really liked. So this one, I'm going to give it a one and uh, this one, I give it a two plus, I think this one that the one I showed you the full retouching on, which is this one. Yeah, no, uh, I like this one. Yeah. And this one. So yeah, at the end of the day, uh, what I got was this plus this plus this, this, and this. Voila, so that was my little photo walk. You know, not the best photo I've taken, but you know, decent, you know, decent photo. And uh, now I'm gonna be heading down to Big Sur. And if you didn't get a chance, uh, check out The Hollywoodans. It's a, a movie that just comes out where I'm the lead actor with 30 amazing actors. It's on pre-shell. Uh, we were really done on the charts on iTunes. We're like number 55 now. We're back at top 30 in a pre-order. If you click here, you can pre-order it on iTunes. And if you do pre-order it on iTunes, I will love you forever. Because if you pre-order it, basically what's gonna happen is that when a movie gets released on the 16th of May, that is when the sale is gonna happen. And when the sale is gonna happen, if I have a whole bunch of sales that day, 
then maybe I can be in the top five, top 10 internationally. And if that happens, I can continue on doing movies, which would be my life dream. So if you ever wanted to help me, I'm gonna make 30 tutorials in 30 days, you know, with a whole bunch of free stuff. All I'm asking is love. No, all I'm asking is pre-order The Hollywoodans and uh, leave a little review. You only have the trailer uh, to decide, you know, whether you like the movie. I know it's kind of thin to make a review, but apparently reviews are as much important. So maybe you can just do a review on the trailer and pre-order the movie. If you do, as I said, I will love you forever.